Hello, 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 everyone. I'm Barb Owen, and this is not my regular time to stream. <laughs> However, it's when I am streaming. Because... Hang on a second, I gotta check something. Okay. We're good. We're good. Yeah, we're good. Thanks, everybody. Hello, hello. This is when I'm streaming because last week I couldn't get my head off the pillow <laughs> for very long. <laughs> ah. So, we are going to imagine that I and you and everyone else is in perfect health, okay? It's great to see everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. Just check, looking at the chat for a second here. Welcome to everyone. I was a little under the weather. Uh, you can probably tell in my voice that I'm not quite back to normal. The only thing I've been um, left with is a little bit of, you know, the respiratory grunge. And I no longer look like Donald Duck. So this is a big, um, this is a big step up. <laughs> Although I'm left with the remnant of the the Donald Duckness, if you know what I mean. Anyway, <clears throat> yes, it is Drama Free Friday, Josie. It definitely is. So, so we're just going to sit here for a minute since this isn't really my regular day. I don't know how many of you showed up last week and found out that I wasn't here. Yeah, I'm much better. Josie, I did, um, last week I did do the VIP class on Saturday and uh, kind of kind of had to get my way through that but we made it we made it Josie was there Josie Webb anyway so hello and hello to everyone so I'm so glad you're here so I'm having a little bit of um, what is this this is traditional medicinals tea it's called mint with probiotics or something I don't know Anyway, I'm much better than I'm much better than I was a week ago. I kept thinking last week, um, early in the week, because I really started feeling crappy on Sunday. There was a bunch of days till Friday, and I'm thinking, oh, you know, this thing will run its course. I'll get over it, get back, and Friday I'm good to go. I'm telling you, I got to Wednesday night, and I'm like, I cannot stream. I can't do it. <laughs> Hi, Ina. Good to see you. I just saw you pop in the chat. Um, I just hadn't seen Ina for a long time. That's why I had to say that. Hey, Shu, I haven't seen you for a long time either. So it's great to see all of you fun, fun, wonderful people. So anyway, I'm drinking a little tea. And then if I, um, if I run out, it's at that. <clears throat> this thing is at the stage where you got to keep drinking something. <clears throat> so... Uh, yes, Lynn, go right ahead. She wants to plug the Disabled Artist Foundation nonprofit fundraiser. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for asking. That was great. Sandra, so nice to see you. Glad to see you in the chat. That's wonderful. So anyway, okay. Um, so let's see, where was I? Yeah, so if you see Clausman coming up and, you know, coming in the background and grabbing my cup and taking off and coming back, it's because I sent him a message that said T. <laughs> it's like T. <clears throat> so anyway, I apologize to you if, um, if there is... An annoyance in my uh, voice and so forth <laughs> here's what you got to do if my voice is irritating to you today just click off now because it's not going to get better <laughs> it won't get better <laughs> more than likely today and the more I talk the more it might be a little you know get a little more gravelly might get sexier sounding you never know all right so we're going to see how long uh, everything holds together today. And I have all the confidence that we're going to be in good shape. 
uh, if there are periods of time where you might see me but not hear me, it's because I've cut the mic off <laughs> and I'm coughing or something, you know. So, <clears throat> okay. So Lynn says that uh, tomorrow, Saturday, March, must be March 9th because today's the 8th, isn't it? Yeah, today's the 8th, so much be, must be tomorrow, the 9th, at 2 p.m. Eastern. There's an auction to raise money for the Disabled Artist Foundation on the YouTube channel Care Heart. And that organization is a 501c. Um, so it is a bona fide charity. And so, <clears throat> so it is... Um, I, I don't know Care personally. I have interacted with her online and watched her YouTube videos and so forth. And she she is good people. And I highly recommend that you consider participating in that and supporting the Disabled Artist Foundation. She is really, um, she's doing good work there. She's doing good work. So, hello, C.L. Aldridge. You made it to a live yeah, great. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, so that is that is the size of that. Um, so make a make a note to yourself about that. It's tomorrow on Care C A R E Heart, which is H A R T. I think it already s scrolled off my screen, but I think it's Care Heart um, on YouTube tomorrow 2 p.m. Eastern so it's the same time as right now whenever you're watching right now it's the same time but it's tomorrow on her channel hello miss Jan yes you're getting to see me live today so glad thank you so much for joining me okay so let's see let's see how we do today so I had I got a um, I got actually I want to show you I'm gonna show you this first I have some things to show you then I have something to do it's not going to be a real heavy-duty art day today okay just saying all right so I got this book in the mail from one of my oh you're welcome Lynn um, oh it's snowing it's snowing in Canada no no okay let me just let me just tell you me and snow we're no longer friends. <laughs> you see my sweater? Looks like a Siamese cat. I got this sweater way, way, way long time before I had Siamese cats. Yeah. Anyway, it must have been telling the future. Anyway, the snow. Yes. I am so tired of snow here. We started, and it's unusual, I'm in the Midwest. And I'm like in the center of the United States of America. Of America. <laughs> that sounded really stupid. Anyway, um, I uh, th we started with winter, heavy duty into winter in November, which is highly unusual because we've had years where in November, the summer flowers in my you know pots when I'd have them planted out on the deck, we still had summer flowers going strong at, at Thanksgiving. This year we went we went from summer to winter full on and we had snow um, last weekend S still so this has been one long long winter it has been very long so anyway um, snow and I are not friends anymore we're we're very much on the outs <laughs> we're very much on the outs so anyway, this book I received from one of my VIP members. I she sent it to me, which was so nice of her. Michelle Smith sent it uh, sent it to me. And any of you who are a cat cat people or B like bright colors or C like Laurel Birch or know who she is, um, you're gonna like this book. So I just thought I would show it to you because it's such an, a wonderful little book. And so I'm just going to leaf through it a little bit. A Laurel Birch is no longer with us, but has wonderful examples of um, 
word art as well as her regular art. Yeah, uh, much of her much of her work was um, put on many home deck items, mugs, and all different kinds of things. Hi, Gail. Hi, everybody. <clears throat> Please know that if I didn't call, you know, welcome you by name, I'm so glad that each and every one of you are here, and thank you for spending your time with me. Um, Laurel had a, she had a um, condition, physical condition, where her bones, I believe the, um, her bones would break for no reason, or, you know, something like that. I'm not a medical person, so therefore I'm, you know not going to tell you the right thing but anyway uh, she died way too young and um, she was an amazing artist an absolute amazing artist yeah so yeah Gail that's why I wasn't here last week uh, anyway I'm here this week and it is drama free Friday by the way which means that we just put all that nonsense out somewhere else and we just pretend it doesn't happen and we just do this we just imagine that we're all 100% healthy in great shape and and it's spring and sunshine and flowers and warmth out there Pat said that she used to go to her outlet sale once a year in the Bay Area in California oh that's great how cool is that <laughs> bean juice salute that's right Jan so I'm just going to page through here just so you can see some of her wonderful art. Um, I did not look for a link for this for you, but um, but isn't this great? I let, This is the cover of the book, but isn't it? I just love that. I love her colorful, whimsical, wonderful style. You are fabulous, free-spirited, fancy-free, flirtatious, and fantastic. And I'm going to take that, I'll tell you. I will take that any day of the week. <clears throat> hey, Jan. Good to see you. Look, isn't this cute? Jan, do you have this book? Jan's a cat person. But look, aren't they cute? She just has, I mean, it is very typically Laurel Birch's style. I was telling the VIP group last Saturday that I have an old embroidery machine. It was like one of the first embroidery machines that came out. And, and, um, I had, uh, gotten her cats and her dogs and the embroidery designs. And I did, I embroidered a black sweatshirt when I used all, pretty much all the colors that, that she, that they had, um, digitized her work for and suggested it was the most colorful cute sweatshirt and I literally wore that sweatshirt look at that one I literally wore that sweatshirt until it just disintegrated because <laughs> I loved it I loved it so anyway um, but that is her that is the book it is called dream believers inspirations for love for life love and hope laurel birch and laurel is l-a-u-r-e-l -E birch is b-u-r-c-h so if you are interested in looking at like i said i did not look up a link but i'm sure you can search it and find one okay and this is the card that um whoops hello camera this is the card that michelle included and so she's she is um messing around with watercolor kind of like many of us are playing with watercolor I don't do much with watercolor other than just dink around with it I can't even say I'm messing around with it I'm just dinking around with it and I thought this was really really cute and when I was looking for something else this week I ran across this book which um, I have had this book since the 70s I guess um, we'll see when it was published. Originally published um, 1976. So yes, I've had it that long. I just thought, I don't know why. I just thought I'd show it to you, just because I thought it was just really fun. If you're into fantasy and gnomes and fairies and stuff like that, 
um, I just thought that you would enjoy seeing this book. Like I said, this is from the 70s. And I'll show you some of the pages in it. And what's fun about this is that it's notated like this is deer fur for the boots and this is the tool bag and um, he's 275 years of age this is the forest gnome he's in the prime of his life at 275 his true height without a cap is 15 centimeters uh, he seems to be frowning but this is caused by posing in harsh daylight yeah so Anyway, it's just a really cute, um, it's just a really cute kind of book. So like I said, if you enjoy um, the fantasy and all that kind of stuff, you might enjoy this book. I have no ulterior, whoops, we need to be careful that we don't offend anybody. <laughs> Sorry, I missed, missed that. Um, I should look at my pages more carefully. Um, anyway, it's just, it's a fun book. I got this back when I was doing decorative painting. And so there were, I don't know if I can show you. Yeah, here's one. We did this. This was a wood cutout that we did, painted in oil, believe it or not. I am feeling better than last week, Jan. Thank you. Um, we did this one. So it's a guy from the cover. We did him, but it was smaller. They were ornament size, so he was probably about this tall. But he looked just like this, the cutout. They were done in oil. Yeah, oil. Mm-hmm. You want to talk about something that's a challenge. But I loved oil. I loved my oil paints back then. And we did one more, but I don't remember which one. It was one that, that came straight from the book, which probably you couldn't get away with today, but back in the 70s, yeah, we kind of look at him glow, glass blowing. Anyway, the art is wonderful. Um, it's just, it's just a fun, it's just a fun little book. So anyway, I just thought I'd show it to you. Hey, Dawn, how are you? Um, it's out of stock at Thrift Books. Yeah, I I don't have any I, I don't have any information about where you can get it or anything. But anyway, I just thought I'd show it to you just because, just because, no reason, just because. So last month, hey Mary, good to see you. Your timing is impeccable. <laughs> I was going to talk about you. So last month, I um, did this. This was a book cover based on something that Mary, uh, the Mary Atia, who's in the chat right now, she inspired me to do that. Um, okay, Josie says, the discount store in Berkeley, California is operated by her daughter and is open at certain times of the year. One can email and the email will be, be responded to so that's in reference to laurel birch yeah so this was in this was inspired totally by the mary atier because what i saw her do was to take a uh it was a long narrow canvas that she'd painted two figures on and then she took that off the frame of the canvas and then turned it into her uh, cover for her journal and that was last month and so I thought, I got this canvas sitting around. It's an 8 by 10 I don't know what I'll ever do with it. And so I just cut it off that stretcher bar and used it. So I just thought I would show you how. I know I did pictures and I did a blog post of this. But I thought I would just um, show you. I'll get out of the picture so you can see the whole thing. Uh, show you how it turned out. So here's what the cover looks like. So we did a lot of the decoration. This is duck cloth or duck canvas. And then this I stitched onto the cover. And this is a Dina Wakely journal, which I have done nothing in other than get some, some junk, some dirt on it. <laughs> so I've done nothing in it yet. However, I can if I want to. Um, and so I just made it so that it would slip on the front and back covers. 
And I didn't even do a great job of figuring exactly, you know, the same thing. You can see maybe this one is wider than this one. But it worked out really, really well. And on top of that, because it is loose, I can take it off. You know, I can remove it. So if I'm doing something really messy in this journal, I can move it, re remove it. And, and do that. So anyway, thanks to the Mary Atia, Mary Del Abrams from, for uh, inspiring that. Yeah, <laughs> Joycey says dirt can be beautiful. It can. Um, that's kind of ugly and unsightly, but yeah, anyway. So I wanted to show you that. So I thought, just for fun, I would show you, I pulled out a whole bunch of my journals. Yes. And I thought, thanks, Mary. And I thought what I would do is just show you different journal covers to start with today so that you could maybe get some inspiration for covering books that you already have. I do have a few removable covers. As a rule, I tend to just cover, you know, buy a journal of some kind and cover it. So I thought I would show you some of those. So here are a couple of examples of the types of journals that I like to cover. This is just an inexpensive composition notebook. These are available in the United States. Sometimes you can get them two for, 50, two for a dollar, which is 50 cents a piece. Sometimes you can get them for, most of the time I find them for about a dollar a piece. And they are, they come with either lined, ruled paper like this, or sometimes you can find them with um, graph paper inside. So this is just a plain old composition notebook, and I buy them. Now, I here's the goofy part. Okay, S true confession. I will go through the stacks of composition notebooks and look for the covers that I don't have or I have never um, owned. And then I cover them up, so it makes no sense whatsoever. No sense. Yeah. Yeah, school supply time is the, the time to look for them. Sometimes you can find them four for a dollar. Okay. I don't think I've ever been that lucky, but, um, I you know, even paying a dollar a piece for them, to me that's a bargain. It's 100 sheets, 200 pages. So, anyway, true confession. This is the other one. Um the other brand that I really like, these are the Moleskin Kaye collections. This is a set of three. And when you look at these, you need to look at these. I'm going to come in really close so you can see this because you got to pay attention to this. See this little illustration right here? If you want ruled paper or lined paper, you've got to look at the, the front cover, the front band that comes with these. And if it doesn't have lines on there, and if you're not really paying attention, you're going to get one that has plain paper. I have done that, you know, which is not a big deal. I just use those for art journals or whatever. But if you want one with the lines in it, you got to make sure that that's what you get. Um, I love these. They are sewn, as Vicki Ross just pointed out. They are sewn. You can see the stitching here. These do come in different shapes. They are pricey. This one, this collection was $20 for three, uh, three journals. This is the same size uh, as the, or almost the same size. I don't know if it's exactly or not as the composition notebooks. They are more expensive. Clearly, $20 for three is way more expensive than four for a dollar. Um, I really love the paper in these. Um, yes, and the composition notebooks are sewn as well. That's true. Both of them are. I really love the moleskin notebooks, and so I usually will spring for the composition notebooks. I mean, for the moleskin notebooks for my writing journals, for the ones that I'm going to write in all the time. Uh, I'll use composition notebooks for other things, like for note-taking about books I'm studying or whatever, or ideas or, you know, website stuff and that sort of thing. So, um, and th these come in different shapes and different configurations. My current favorite one is the one that's the traveler's notebook size, which is like five by eight. This one is, 
uh, seven and a half by nine and three quarters or 19 by 25 uh, centimeters. And these have a pocket in the back. All the Melskin journals have a pocket in the back. Anyway, I'm just showing you the ones that, that I like to use. So we'll go through some of the uh, composition notebook ones first. Or the composition notebook size. How's that? So I have a whole big old stack. And we'll start with, we'll just start with this one. And many of these I've shown before. And um, so, you know, if you've seen them all before, this is a good time for you to go get a cup of coffee or something. This is one of the Moleskine Cahiers. And this is just the plain craft cover. I did not cover it. In this case, what I did was I just drew on top of it. And moleskin may not be the way to say that. It may be moleskina or whatever, but you know, I'm going to call it moleskin. I get corrected fairly often for my pronunciation of things. <laughs> and I'm just going to put it out there. I say what I say. Okay. So this is drawn with black um, pen. I drew it in pencil first, and then I went over it with black pen. I think it was uh, Micron Pigma pens. And then I went back over it with a couple of different white pens. So this is just drawn on there. <clears throat> uh, this one is paper. This was a jelly print paper. This happens to also be one of the Moleskin journals. This was one piece of paper. This was another piece of paper. Then I took some of the leftover bits of the paper and I turned it into tape. So you can see this is tape. So I put uh, score tape on the back of it and just put it over the edge just because I wanted to bind the edge of it. According to the website, it only has an official pronunciation in Italy. Okay, well, that's good to know. Anyway, this is um, this is a journal of letters that I'm writing to my mother. My mom's been gone for a number of years, uh, but it's uh, it's a way of, of remembering her, and it's a way of um, uh, keeping her in, in my heart. And so this is a letter, this is a journal of letters to my mom. And hands are important. I remember her in in her one of her last days that she was with me. She looked at her hands and she kept studying her hands. And um, and I said, I said, are your hands bothering you? And she said, No, they're just not good for anything anymore. And that just made my heart ache, you know. And man, I was having to think fast on that one, and because she was ninety, ninety four and a half getting close to 95 at that point. And, you know, I was, and she would, had begun to, you know, kind of move in and out of reality pretty rapidly. And I said, um, I said, oh, but think of all the things those hands did. And I started listing off all the things that her hands did. And, and she just sort of sat up a little straighter and she kind of brightened up and she said, I did. And I said, oh yeah, you changed a lot of diapers and you made lots of jellies and jams and you canned lots of green beans. You know, I started going through all this stuff. Anyway, so hands are important to me for lots of reasons. Hey, Janet. So anyway, that is, and, and I use, I didn't always do this, but I use different colors of ink. Um, you know, it, and sometimes I glue stuff in here, you know, just sort of depends. I don't always do that. And um, I like to use different colors of ink in my journals. And if some of them are not archival and they fade off into the distance, like, oh, well, she's gone anyway. So what difference does it make? Okay. Uh, this, whoops, sorry. I got to remember to keep something in the camera, in the view here. This one is from Mandala Madness. Uh, the course, the online course, there is a link to that in the description box below the video. This is fabric, and uh, so this is covered with muslin. And so this is a technique that I used for doing a mandala. It's done with Sharpies and alcohol, and this is something that I did a long time ago, several years ago. I've since seen it online, 
um, or seen it in books and stuff, but I did this way before I ever saw it anywhere else. So anyway, this is, I show you step by step in Mandala Madness how to do that. This one is, this is another moleskin journal. This is one that I was not paying attention to, and as you can see, it is plain paper. So I will make it an art journal, because that's what it's gonna have to be. This one is all, all of the bits and pieces on here come from the Mandal Madness inspiration cards. There's a link to that in the video description below this, um, below the window here. And what I, uh, I highly recommend, not just because I did them, but because they are so creative and so much fun, that you have two decks, one for inspiration and one that you use for art supplies. I cannot, I, I mean, my son, uh, the technical department, is the person who told me to do that originally, and I'm like, oh, I could never cut up my cards. I could never do that. And he said, cut up the damn cards. That was a direct quote, by the way. And so I got out a, a deck and I took a big deep breath and I actually started cutting them up and doing things with them. The creativity that that I was able to enjoy because of that, uh, just it took me to a whole different place. Uh, he has wisdom way beyond his years sometimes, I'm telling you. So anyway, that's where this came from. So this is all, all of this is bits and pieces. Let me come in really close. These are all bits and pieces from the Mandala Madness Inspiration cards. And then after they were um, put on the cover, then I embellished them with pens. So even after they were put on here, then I went around and I continued the embellishment and made them even different than they were intended to be. Yeah, so that's that. I cut them up. Is race here. <laughs> I'm surprised he didn't chime in on that one. So anyway. But I love the way this looks. I absolutely love the way this looks. All right, that's that one. This one is, um, let's see, what did I do in this? This is, this is fabric paper. There is a video here on YouTube that is a sample video class from howtogetcreative.com that is how to make fabric paper using construction paper. Uh, this one is, uh, I'm sorry, how wonderful to do such a beautiful thing in memory of your mother. Oh, thanks, Eileen. Um, I, it's, it was really, okay, this is going to sound very selfish. But um, it's for me. <laughs> that book of letters is for me. You know, it's just my way of... of uh, it, here's the deal. There are so many things that have happened since she left that she wouldn't know about. And so it gives me that chance to reflect about things that have happened since she left. So things like um, so, uh, cell phones. You know, smartphones weren't even a blip on the radar then. Um, FaceTime, not even a thought. I mean, there's just so many things. And so it's like it gives me those that chance to reflect not only on that thing, but also like I'm explaining to her what it is and how much fun um, that thing is, you know. So anyway. So it's purely selfish. <laughs> it's purely selfish. So back to the fabric paper. This is fabric paper made with paper napkins. And then there's a lot of stitching and so forth on it. So it's heavily, I'll show it to you up close. You can see all that? That is paper napkin turned into fabric paper. It is heavily stitched and embellished. So there's a close up of the front cover. So this one's done with paper napkins. Exactly. I remember and think of how she would react to stuff. I do. It's true. It is very true. And this is tape that, uh, this was gaffer tape. If you know what that is, gaffer tape is something I was introduced to by my son because he is in the, he does things in film. And gaffer tape is what they use to, 
tape down wires and stuff so the on sets and that kind of stuff so i had i bought a roll of black gaffer tape which i thought would last forever it was the biggest roll you've ever seen in your life and it's almost gone I, i've used it for art purposes i also use it we use it to tape cords and wires down all over the studio here too so anyway that one is um fabric paper made done with paper napkin and the, if you want to see how to do fabric paper with construction paper that video is here on youtube as well as on the website so you'll find it two places if you're a member of howtogetcreative.com you can find it there easily if you're not you can find a sample of the video classes here on the youtube channel and it is fabric paper from construction paper and that would the reason we did that we have 12 classes 12 sample video classes and remember i when you watch these remember i recorded these a long time ago so i've come a long way since those days early days of the recording <laughs> <clears throat> yes anyway um is it but they're here so that you get a flavor for what the website's about um and so this one now, this is uh, muslin. This is 100% muslin, and this is scraped paint and stencils and stamps and so forth and so on. I don't remember when I did this, but um, I love the way it turned out. Love the way it turned out. This is another moleskin, another moleskin journal. But I love the way this turned out. Love it. I just, it makes me, the colors make me happy, and um, yeah, I love it. This one, we did this, I did this on stream at one point in time, and this one is done with a painter's drop cloth, okay? And I happened, actually, I think my husband, Claus Man, who's in the chat, he gave me this this big old drop cloth and it's white most of them that you find are off-white this one happened to be white and i am hoarding that trying not to but i am hoarding it and then i used it on a stream here several years ago with the round jelly plates and i jelly plate printed this entire thing and then this is glued to a composition notebook so there's that and then I I sometimes tab things at the top so because I'll use different subjects and then if all else fails I throw stick stuff in the back um, I'll tab the various you know if I'm doing various subjects I watch a lot of online programs and I take notes on them and so forth so anyway and this one is an old cutter quilt so this quilt is it was literally came from the bottom the 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 bottom it was in the um yeah there's a better word it was in a dog crate a friend of mine is a vet and they were using these old quilts in the dog cages for dogs that came in to board and she realized the wife of the vet realized it and she was like oh no barb's gonna have a fit about that because she knows how much i love quilts and fabric and fiber and so forth and so she rescued a couple of them and brought them to me and of course not only were they in terrible shape to start with but now they've been walked on and and you know messed up by dog feet and so what i did is i repaired I'll give you a real close look this is a repair this is a repair you can tell that if you look really really close and then I did it's heavily stitched and the reason it's so heavily stitched is because all of this stitching is holding the bits and pieces of this quilt together okay uh, so the parts that were threadbare, I did replace with another, you know, another patch. These were hand-dyed patches of mine, hand-dyed fabric. And so then I just did lots of machine stitching. And down here, this is just some big hand stitches. These are repaired patches as well. And um, 
and I've done lots of things with these old cutter quilts and um, it's really it's really a challenge and a lot of fun and then I re then I glued it to the front of a notebook so there you go so that is if you find an old cutter quilt if you find an old quilt that is junk you know in that meaning and by saying junk I mean one that cannot be repaired and you don't have a familial attachment to it I I personally don't have a problem with using it and giving it new life therefore it doesn't end up in the bottom of dog crate so yeah so that's that one this one is not my favorite um, d uh, my favorite cover in fact I don't think I've ever used this journal I haven't I love the fabric I love this fabric this I bought this fabric just because I bought it in two colors the green and the red I love it because it has words on it and so I went in and I used a, a fine line bottle with paint in it and I just did kind of scribbly outlines and the dots are put on using the fine line applicator just to make it a little bit more something something uh, this yeah like I said this is not my favorite thing I ever did but um, I did it for some specific purpose I don't know anyway it's kind of goofy looking I like this this is um, these pieces I did this on stream actually I don't know how many years ago this is t-shirts these are old worn out t-shirts from my husband from Claus Man that I dyed using color color wash I think it's color wash it was a ranger product that they no longer make which is a fabric dye if you use it on fabric and you treat it the way you should treat it um, it is permanent okay if you use it on paper you cannot make it um, where it won't reactivate but on fabric you can make it that way and this is more of that and I'll zoom in and the this is the t-shirt fabric that I made into a rose and then this is the t-shirt fabric that I made into leaves okay so that's that one and then I wove it this is woven so this is uh, ribbon floss I used to have a retail store and so this is ribbon floss left over from the days of my retail store and so I did a weaving with that so that's how this came together you love this cover you got there are some of you that really love this see it's not my favorite one at all it's why I've never used it apparently because it just sits in a stack <laughs> just sits in the stack I'm glad you guys like it it's not my it has never been my favorite one I'll tell you that <clears throat> one moment okay this one is some of you probably recognize this you like the weaving of the sparkle thread oh interesting <laughs> well I'm I'm interested it's interesting that several of you like it um Joycey of course you remember Joycey able to rejoice in the chat remembers everything we have a name for Joycey. Joycey and I go way back to Ustream, and that is she is the memory of the hive. And that is the truth. Joycey remembers everything. Do not say anything, do anything, or otherwise, if you don't want Joycey to remember it. And she's likely to write it down in her journal if, yeah, she's like that. We love our Joycey. I call her Noodle. <laughs> <clears throat> this one I'm sure some of you recognize what this is this is just duct tape and this duct tape um, a lot of it I embossed and I can't tell you how I did it I'm assuming what I did let's see if I can tell now I really can't tell I was gonna say I'm assuming that I put it 
that I put those down on paper or cardstock or something and then ran them through the embossing folders. I'll get in really close so you can see. See? So you can see the embossing. So this is just duct tape of various kinds. And I did nothing, turn it this way so you can see, these are letters down here. I didn't do anything to bring out the embossing. Like there's no metallic wax or anything on it. But that one is done just with different kinds of duct tape. And it's all just scrappy duct tape. The back is scrappier than the front. Yeah. So that's that. Um, this one, I'm telling you, I'm only, I'm only, I still have a big old stack of these. If you guys get sick and tired of seeing these, you're going to have to say something. <clears throat> Otherwise, I'll keep going. You'll see this paper a couple more times. This is the Tattered Angels Mixed Media Paper. And it's, this comes, it, it has a, it's a grayscale drawing grayscale art um, and it is um, I painted it using the Ken Oliver color burst I believe I think that's what I used so it, these are this came in 12 by 12 sheets and so I painted the whole thing I cut out what I could use this is the binding. This is a composition notebook. Okay, this is a composition notebook. So it has the composition notebook has that tape. The binding tape, you know, that comes over to this part. And so I just put this up to that point. Okay, so I did this up to this point. So it's just this big. Um, did a stream on painting this paper once. Okay, that's good. See, I do, I've done so many things that I've kind of forgotten. And then there was a bunch of the paper left, and so I just patchworked it together. So this is all bits and pieces left from those mixed media papers. And uh, I patchworked it together on the back cover. Now I want to show you, this is this is something that's not a good idea to do. This paper, or this little detail in here, this was a dimensional paint, okay? And I couldn't tell you the brand that I used, but this is a dimensional paint. And then, can you see how crappy it looks? I need to go back in and touch all those little things up. I mean, they were very dimensional. They, they had like the, they were kind of like those enamel dot things that I used on here and it was thoroughly dry when I put it in the stack totally dry but I put it in a stack with some other stuff on top of it and it squashed the dots and also stuck it to whatever was below it so the dots now are all thoroughly flat <laughs> and uh, so yeah watch your dimensional paints if you're gonna put things and put pressure on top of them Um, iris paint. I don't know what iris paint is. Barbara says iris paint does that, then flattens and sticks to things and gets wacky. I don't know what iris paint is. That's interesting. So this is um, this is from Tattered Angels, and this is their mixed media paper. I really like their mixed media paper, and it's easy to do because it takes very little work to put the color on top of it. Very little work. So that's a fun one. Okay. You still want to see more? Tulip dimensional paint. Okay. <laughs> that that I know. <laughs> Iris, I wasn't sure. Tulip, I get. Okay. This one is... I'm going to come in close. In fact, I'm going to let you see this this way. This is done with a jelly plate. Okay, so this is done with a jelly plate. And it this was on brown um, 
duck cloth, brown duck cloth. You can kind of see it back here. So this was 100% done on the jelly plate with various stencils. Well, um, AJ, I have enough jelly plates for both of us, so <laughs> yeah, I like I like my jelly plates. So this is all done on the jelly plate, and the brown that you see in the background that is the color of the duck cloth. So that's that one. Okay. All right. So that is that one. This one is an interesting one. Uh, again, this is these are composition notebooks. I don't know what I used this one for. I think this was just a regular journal. And again, sometimes if I don't have regular tabs, then I'll use post-it notes to tab things. This, this particular piece of fabric was a piece of fabric that when we were cleaning some stuff up, I found this piece of fabric that my son had. I don't know what all he had done to it, but it had all of this um, background stuff, this and that, and this, and these words, growth of the heart. This was all done in his handwriting. He did all of that. Um, he's not known for his back then he was not known for his spelling and so but he did correct himself and he put the th up there so he did this when he was much younger so i found the fabric so this was all done this was all done by him this is what the original fabric looked like so this is like duck cloth or probably drop cloth i have no idea what he did i'm he probably doesn't know what he did um and then i took it when I found it, I kept it because it had his handwriting on it. And then I embellished it. So there's this is some stamping. This is stamping. This is one of those stamps, those roller stamps that honestly, that is that that ink in those things does not dry. It dries on fabric. It does not dry on paper. So you need to em em emboss it. Um, these are this is paper this is paper so these were papers that this one is strips of paper and this is a, a regular piece of paper I'll zoom in so you can see that see that's strips of paper and those were all paste papers I believe that I did either that or jelly printed papers and um, I don't know why I had those I had them put together for something and then I just used them to cut out a heart and did some stitching on it and this is a butterfly a wire butterfly that Clausman did so he's in the chat so you'll have to ask him about that but he did that for me and then I wanted to save it somewhere so I attached it I sewed it it's not glued it's stitched onto the cover of this journal because if you've been around me very long you know how much I love butterflies um, this is fabric Again, I just loosely stitched. The stitching is done free motion. And this heart down here, um, this is this ha is different pieces of paper as well. I don't have any idea. I don't remember. I don't remember. Anyway, so if nothing else, some of these might give you some ideas for doing, you know, using in your art. But this, like I said, this was a piece of fabric that I happened to find. I'm sure to my son it was a rag. To me, it is precious. To me, it is totally precious. And I had to keep it. I had to do something with it. And so that's what I did. And then I drew these little red hearts. Those are drawn on with a paint pen. So this is one of my favorite, my favorite journals. And it is totally because it is my son's artwork. I have, a, I have a funny story to tell you about his artwork. He took art when he was in high school because he had to have a fine arts credit. And um, we homeschooled when he was in junior high school. Okay. And so his homeschooling, um, we did that in junior high and we did that until he was 7th, 8th, and ninth grades here in the United States. And then... Um, we decided that he was going to go to a public high school. 
Well, our public high school here is consists of four years, 9, 10, 11, and 12, grades 9, 10, 11, and 12. And he did ninth grade with me, which means that his credits didn't count. So he went into the public high school, and in order for him to graduate with his class, he had to complete four years of school in three. And that is a lot. That is a lot to do. So anyway, he, he, it was it was back to back to back to back classes, and he swam on the swim team, and he was a, a competitive swimmer, and he was phenomenal, and I'm very very proud of him, of course. And so, um, he had to have this fine arts credit, so he took art, like whatever it was, just sort of a general art class, and I didn't even know what he was doing. You know, he never brought stuff home and showed me or anything. Until one day, I think it was after the class was totally done, he he got out some of his stuff that he was learning. I don't know if it was watercolor or acrylic or what it was exactly. I think it was watercolor. And it was, um, and he got out this stack of papers and he showed them to me and he says, you want any of this stuff? And I'm like, well, yes. And he said, well, this one's really funny. And, he, and I have these framed and hanging in our hallway. I have them framed because I was so happy with, to know that he did this, you know, and he had this one and he said, I got an A on this one. And I said, well, I, I said, okay, so that's really cool. And he said, well, it was the whole end of the hour. And I could see him doing this where he'd messed around the whole hour in class and didn't get anything done. And they had to turn something in. He said, I didn't have anything done. So he said, I took my paper and I went around to everybody's palette and I just turned my paper upside down and went around to everybody's palette and then signed it and turned it in. He got an A. He got an A because that's what he did. Turned his paper upside down and went around and pressed it on top of everybody's palette on their leftover paint. Yeah. I guess you have to know how hard to push. I don't know. <laughs> I know. Isn't that the craziest story? <laughs> I know that wire butterfly is great. Clausman's in the chat if you want to talk to him about it. So he's the one that made that. This is probably, and I probably have said this before, but this is probably my all-time favorite next to the mandala um, cover that I showed you in the beginning. This is probably my all-time favorite journal cover. I absolutely love this. This one is... I love every single thing about this journal cover. I love the way it feels. I love the um, color combination. I love the hands. I love the way it turned out. This is 100% jelly plate printed. There's nothing else done to this but jelly plate printing. And it was a complete and utter um, crapshoot. I, I couldn't reproduce this if I tried. I don't even know how I did it. Yeah. It is, it is uh, my favorite. And it does say, yeah, Joyce says, it says Barb. You're right. It absolutely does. I love this journal. Uh, so I went, when I was finished with it, this is on muslin. When I was finished with it, I went around and I trimmed it with a pair of scalloping scissors. That's why you see this. These are fabric scalloping scissors, which are not inexpensive by any means. And then I stitched it down this thing that you see in the back. That is felt, wool felt, and I stitched it down to the wool felt. And then I assume what I did is I glued the felt to the cover. I think that's probably what I did because it has a little bit of cushion to it. And because the muslin layer is not glued down, it's the felt layer that was glued down to the notebook, it has a little bit of movement. Anyway, it's my all-time favorite. I do love that one very much. Uh, this one is done on muslin. Again, I love working on a good heavy muslin, which is just a plain, like a plain calico. And I love working on that. And I buy the best grade that I can get. And I buy it at Hobby Lobby. And it's heavyweight muslin is what it's called. So this is done with a bunch of stencils and some masks that I made with gesso and then some paint pen, whatever. It's not my favorite, but it's okay. 
Uh, okay, this one. This one is, this was Sticky Back Canvas. And this is um, Ken Oliver Color Bursts. I wanted to see how they would behave on fabric. So this is the Ken Oliver Color Burst. And you can see I only did it on one side. And this is some of my tape, the tape made from deli paper. And this worked out really well. After it dried, it was it never shifted on me. So I really like how that turned out. Um <laughs> thanks, Josie. <laughs> Barnes branch doesn't fall far from the tree, huh? This one was a piece of jelly plate printed fabric on muslin that I didn't like. Um, I'm not sure what I didn't like about it because after it sat for a while, it grew on me and I put it on this, this journal and I really like it. So this is all jelly plate printing. Uh, this is on a moleskin. This is another moleskin. And this is another piece of that mixed media paper from Tattered Angels. So that's all from Tattered Angels, that mixed media paper. And a few more. We're almost at the end. This one. Let's see. Uh, this one was a commercial fabric. So this is a commercial fabric. These were bits that I cut out using circle dies. Let me closer so you can see them. These are circled dies, and they are various bits of jelly plate printed fabric that I glued down to the surface of this and then went over it with the fine line applicator bottle and black paint. You can see that on this particular fabric, it spread. Um, it didn't spread on the, the pieces that had a lot of paint on them but on this background fabric they definitely spread so if that happens then you go around it a whole bunch of times so it doesn't look like a mistake yeah I know the tricks I know the tricks um, and this is more of the tape that I did so and this was another piece of fabric commercial fabric I didn't I apparently didn't have enough of this so I used this one uh, this is not my favorite I put some fabric butterflies these were die cut from fabric that I had jelly plate printed put them on here of course they just disappeared totally went right into the print so I went around them with the fine line applicator bottle and some cobalt teal paint trying to call them out you know it's not successful on that side I like circles I like this side so there's that one. This one, another, you can see the recurring theme of hands. <laughs> we all have our things, you know, that are recurring themes. Hands are one of mine. Uh, this is jelly plate printed. This is on muslin. Uh, same thing. It's all in muslin. Uh, some of these I don't like. Like I went around this with a, a paint pen. I was going around various shapes. This just looks like an ear, like a weird ear with a weird earring or something. You know, that's that's uglier than homemade mud, but this side I like. Yeah. And there's some mandalas in here. Yeah, there's some mandalas. This one is a piece of paste paper. And we're going to do a little bit of paste paper stuff today. This is paste paper. This is tape that I made using deli paper this is leftover duct tape paste paper tape from deli paper duct tape so this is paste paper so is this this one is one of my favorites uh, this one is this is paper these are papers that I made and this was from a class that I did in life book several years ago maybe back in 2012 and these were this was paper that was inspired by the class that Tracy Batista did um, hold on a minute um, Mary wants to know do I tape down the muslin 
Um, for the jelly plate printing, no, because I'm I'm um, I'm actually putting the fabric on the plate when I print the muslin. I'm putting the fabric on the plate. Is that how I did it? So yeah, most of the time I think I put the fabric on the plate and smoothed it and pulled it off. But sometimes I use the plate as a stamp. But I did not tape it down. I don't think. Ask Joycey. She'll remember. Joycey will remember. Um, oh, I love the, I love the Elmer's art paste. Oh, that's cool. Gail says, that's funny, Barb, about the hands theme. That's what I used for a sculptural piece and got an A plus in the art class in high school. It was a last minute piece too. <laughs> See? That last minute thing. That last minute thing. Um on the fabric, like on like on this fabric, this was all jelly plate printing. This was. Most of the ones that I said were jelly plate printed are pretty much all jelly plate printed unless I put them on the notebook and then did some embellishing afterwards. Can't get Elmer's art paste. You can use wallpaper paste. You can use liquid starch. Either one of those. You might be able to use other things, but those are the things I know you can use. Um, so anyway, this was, so these were, we did, I must have done four different pieces I don't think this is the same piece. I think these are two different pieces. So I think I must have done four pieces of paper. And I used, um, they were big pieces of paper. So I used a bunch of this. Oh, I know what I did. I used a bunch of this for prompt cards at some point. And this is what I had left. This is dimensional, by the way. You see the dimension in this? See the dimension there's a lot of dimension in this that's from those tulip writing uh, the tulip slick writers is what we used to call them I don't know what they're called now tulip dimensional paint and each of these has dimension on them but this one has the most and so I was using up the very last bits of the paints of the papers so I was patchworking everything together. But I like the way that turns out. Yeah, I like how that patchwork turns out. But I love the dimension on this. You can really see it there. I love the dimension of that. And I don't know that I used... I don't know what color I used. I don't know if I actually used red or if I just used... I could have. I probably did. Because I have that paint, that dimensional paint in a lot of different colors. Um... I must have. It must have been red. I don't know. I don't remember. Um, and this one, this is another class. Um, the technique, not the book cover, but the technique is another one of the video classes here on YouTube that's a free class or a sample class from How to Get Creative. And this is a technique called locker hooking. L-O-C-K-E-R. Locker hooking. And show, I show in that class exactly how to do locker hooking. I don't show you how to make the book cover, but I show you how to do locker hooking. Um, and it's just because there's not enough time to show you how to do a book cover. This book cover is attached to this um, composition notebook with uh, carpet tape. And I want you to see that carpet tape is not necessarily permanent for fabric because it is coming off. So someday I'm going to have to repair that. But that is what I attached it to this composition notebook with because I couldn't think of anything else to attach it with. But it is not something... It, I mean, it's still stuck on there, but it's not necessarily permanent, permanent, forever and ever, amen. So, But I love this because I love the feel of it. But this is using scraps of fabric and um, I made it up as I went along, and this is locker hooking. So that's all of the composition shape notebooks. So now what I'm going to do is just show you some of the other kind of um, smaller notebooks. <coughs> oh, 
Yeah, there goes the carpet tape discussion. There's a whole story behind that. <laughs> Yep, yep. And Gail says, I just gave her a good idea for her one and only traditional rug hooked rug that she made. All right. These are, let's see, these three are moleskin notebooks. These are from the chapters. They're called chapters, is what they're called. Okay. These come in different sizes, which I didn't realize. This is the size I like. This is the size the last time I ordered that I got. I don't know what I'm going to do with these because they are too little for much. I'll use them for something. But um, yeah, this is the size I like. This is a traveler's notebook size. Uh, what I love about these is that they open completely flat and I I just love how they feel you know anyway so these three are the chapters notebooks from moleskin and the cover on this one is one of those mixed media papers from um, uh, uh, tattered angels sorry I got distracted So that is what this is. That is one piece of paper from one piece of paper that I cut. The coloring is done using the Ken Oliver Color Burst. So this is another one of those gray, gray scale papers. Takes very little work to make them look really good. So that's that. Um, this is another one. This paper was done with Dynaflow. So this is Dynaflow paint. <coughs> with salt on it. This is from the Mandel Madness Inspiration deck. This is one of the cards. This is from the Mandel Madness deck as well. This is another one of the Tattered Angels mixed media papers. Um, again with the Ken Oliver color bursts. And this is from the Mandel, from, it's one of the inspiration quotes from the deck. Bye, Norma. Thanks for hanging out. So that's another one of those. And then these are also the Traveler's Notebooks. Um, similar size. Let's see, are they the same? A little different size. These are a little bit wider, maybe half an inch wider. These are moleskin journals. This one is a jelly plate print. Okay, this. And this is some tape made from washi or made from deli paper that was that I painted so that's what this one is this one Mary Mary Atia, this is another inspiration from Miss Mary Atia. I had three canvases that I wasn't going to use so I cut them apart and I made a whole bunch of stuff out of them and some of you may remember this canvas I painted this I think this is the one I painted on stream this was from a book. The technique was from a book, and I don't remember the name of the book right off the cuff. <laughs> Vicki says, the cow tattered angel in their first series from Tattered Angels um, was her design. Oh, that's cool, Vicki. Vicki Ross, that is. Um, so this was from the canvas. I cut it apart. And I've used every single bit of that canvas in various iterations. So this one is covered. So it's attached to the cover. And this, the body of the butterfly I took out and made a bookmark. Let's see. I don't think I have the bookmark here. No. This is from that same canvas. This is a part of the canvas. I think it's part of this one. And I made bookmarks out of it. And so this says she was tempted to cause a scene, and she did. So I made bookmarks out of what was left. I made cards, bookmarks. 
um, ATCs, various and sundry other things. Anyway, but I love the way that canvas feels on these books. And then here's another couple of um, book covers that are separate from the book. Okay, so these are separate from the book. This one is paper. This is paper made with a brayer. So this is when I was doing jelly plate printing and cleaning the brayer on, I always clean it off on the mixed media, Kansa mixed media paper. So this is left over from jelly plate printing. And then I made the cover. So here's the cover. There's more jelly plate clean off. And this is a um, an accordion style book that I've glued some of the pages together. So this is watercolor paper. I don't think I did anything on the other side yet. No. But because of the, the way that the book is formed, um, I wanted to be able to take it out, take the book out to work on it so that I didn't mess up my cover. So, and then I just made a belly band out of the same exact paper as, as one of these papers. Die cut a couple of butterflies and the belly band holds it closed. This one is fabric. So this is, you can see the hands in it. This is more jelly plate printed fabric. This is muslin. Okay, so this is muslin jelly plate printed fabric. You can see the image there. I like the colors of this. This is um, this is a stamp. The black is a stamp. The dots I put on afterwards using a probably a pencil eraser. These are bits. These are from a VIP class. This is using uh, Tyvek and making embellishments of Tyvek. It has a belly band. So this is made of the leftover fabrics, and this is more um this is another one of the journals the the accordion style kind of journal this is from this is from this bit and this this is all from the vi one of the vip classes over on the website okay so but again because of the way this is done the book can f pull out and work on it and then i can put it back in here Okay, so that is um, that. All right, that's all the journals I have to show you. <laughs> Aren't you glad that, how long did that take us? Over an hour to go through all those journals. That's just the covers. Yeah, that's just the covers. All right, now, let's move on, shall we? So I found this at, um, oh, thank you. Oh, I know. I love the Brayer papers, too. I, and I'm much, I will tell you, I am far more successful at Brayer papers if I do them while I'm doing something else. If I sit down and use a Brayer specifically for the, I'm like, I'm going to make Brayer, pay, I'm going to paint this paper with a Brayer. I am never as successful as I am if I let it happen while I'm doing something else, like jelly plate printing. So, yeah. Okay, so this I found at Barnes & Noble. I could not find a link for this. I did not go to the Barnes & Noble website to see if I could find a link there. You might be able to find it there. Um, they did not have it available on Amazon, so I did not go any further than that. Anyway, this book which has over 550 stickers. That could be 551, by the way. Um, I don't know. But 550 stickers, and it was less than $10. And then they had a coupon, you know, that was like 20% off. So it was very reasonable. Um, 
so what I did is I took it apart. I took all the pages out of it. And I saved the cover because this is really heavy, nice, heavy. Um, it's between a cardstock and a chipboard weight. Yeah, count them. Mm -hmm. Sure, Joycey. So I saved this, and so I'll recycle this into something else. You know, make a book using this book cover or something. It might just fit right on something else. Anyway, I pulled the stickers out, the pages out. It is a sewn and glued binding. So you can see the holes there where it's been stitched, but it has also been glued. So if you're going to pull the signatures out, you're going to have to, um, you're going to have to, you know, pull the, you know, separate the glue as well as, as the stitching. The reason I did that is because what I wanted to do was to take them out and make it easier to do some coloring on. So I'm going to give you an idea of some of these. What what they have is these are the stickers and then there's a practice page on some of them. Okay. And the subject matter is very diverse. Okay. Super diverse. And these, they're, you know, they are, um, and it tells you here, peel off. Because, I mean, they are, once you get them started, you see, they'll just peel off. Now, I haven't tried sticking them anything yet, but, um, I don't ever trust sticker glue or any of that kind of stuff. I always put glue under it, you know, personally. Unless it's going straight down over raw paper, then I leave it. But other than that, I always put glue on it. But just to give you some of the ideas, as I said, the subject matter is very, very diverse. So this is dogs and cats. No, I guess this is just dogs. Fire plug, dog house, bow tie. Um, some of these I've already pulled out. This is cats, different kinds of cats. Hopefully you can kind of see. They're very, very light. The outline's very light. Um, fish and sea life and so forth. Uh, this is like surfing and sunglasses and surfing and surfboards and waves. Uh, a car, a motorcycle, a hammer, a tank. If you ever need a sticker for that's of a tank, that's a big old tank, it has one of those. Um, this one is like Viking, like modes of transportation. And this one is like different kinds of foods, pretzels, cupcake, piece of bread, um, like French bread, cheese, and so forth. So it's a very diverse kind of um, book desserts like frozen desserts and stuff like that or you know some of banana you can kind of make up your own thing animals um, horses and other kinds of animals there's a pig this one is just fun different kinds of shapes like a rainbow um, these are like you know like bubble letters these are like bubble animals um, and so forth. Fruits, um, clock, couch, pipe, hat, so forth. Some of them you have to really use your imagination as to what they are. Um, and everybody needs a meat cleaver sticker and a hatchet. I don't know what you do with that, but you know, there's one there if you need it. Some various kinds of musical things, um, baseball, Looks like a football player. A t big tooth. If you ever need a big tooth sticker, you got one. So some of them are really usable. Some of them are like, eh, no, not so much. Some of them, these are like ca little cartoon images. Let's see what we have here. This is just like different labels, different label shapes. Um... 
more labels. These look like labels. And I love these, this big alphabet, all these alphabet and numbers and symbols. I love those. Um, and if anybody needs a gun, there's one of those in here. Mm -hmm. And let's see, in these, just to give you, I'm just going through this pretty quickly so you have an idea. There's an electric plug if you need that. Um, a light bulb, an hourglass, a film reel. Uh, these look like, these are zodiac, uh, signs of the zodiac. These are cute. These are different nature things, um, different. This looks like a windmill. I don't know. Some of these, I don't know. This looks like maybe a skyline. Uh, coffee grinder. These are kitchen things, coffee grinder and so forth. Those are kind of cute. Um, if you need a gas mask, there's one of those too. So there's a gas mask and a radio and a, um, a, a horn, whatever you call the horn. There's um, handcuffs. Yeah. So there you go. I told you it was a very diverse group of stickers. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to set these over here for the moment. So what I've done is I took out some pages and the reason I showed you all that stuff first is because I wanted you to see what they were going to look like because you can't tell what they are once we pull them out unless here you can see a little bit, right? So what did I do here? I took the pages out and I cut them, I ripped them apart. Um, yeah, I just ripped them apart. Hello, Miss Dawn. Oh, you didn't miss everything. You just missed a whole bunch of show and tell. <laughs> so what I did is, and this is in the paste paper sample video classes here on YouTube on my channel. So you can see what I did. I'm just going to talk you through it because it's too big a mess to do here on my table. I use different kinds of stencils like this. Just different, several different stencils, okay? I laid them down. You got to make sure you put them on um, a plastic sheet or something to protect whatever you're doing. And then I used Dilutions ink sprays to spray over the stencils. So these were some blues and greens, obviously. These were some reds, yellows, and pinks or purples or whatever. Okay, so that's what I did. So that's how I got here. And then I let those dry. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up a little bit of um, art paste and paint. And then we're going to paint on top of these. And the big question will be, what are these stickers? And you really don't know until you get them done and then start peeling them off and using them. So, hey Nancy. I am better, thank you. Um, all right, so this is what I have here. This is the, um, I did a whole video on the paste paint recently. In fact, I just put it up this week. And this is what I'm using. It's art paste. This is from Elmer's. It, I've put this on and off this container so many times that I've finally ripped off the brand name. So I've used the art paste. If you don't have the Elmer's art paste or can't get it, you can use wallpaper paste or liquid starch. So I'm just going to put a little bit, and we're just going to see if we can do a little bit. I don't want to use too much. I don't want to have a bunch left over. I'm proud. I never, this is like toast and jelly or peanut butter and jelly. You can't ever come out even on, you know, mixing up just as much as you want. Never, ever, ever does that work. Um, tray thing brings back memories. Yeah, the, uh, this uh, friend sent this to me because I was originally using a foam 
egg carton to do this, and eventually it sprung a leak and made a mess. Yep. All right. So what we're going to do is I'm going to use the color shift paints just because they're handy. They're on my desk, so I'm going to use the color shift paints to do this. So don't, uh, don't freak out because that's what I'm using. All right, I need to get a stir stick. And I have four, I've opened six little areas of paint here. So we'll do six colors. So these are the colors I'm going to use, the color shift paints. Adjusted my settings, but still can't see them. Can't see what, Judy, Julie? I'm not sure what you're referring to. They're fun paints, Dawn. They really are. They're fun to use. Okay, so let's um, see if we can mix up some paints. Hi, Erin. So we're going to just put some paint in here. I haven't used the color shift paint with the art paste, so I don't even know how this is going to work. Might work great. Might not. If it doesn't work great, then I'll be putting something else with them, which I'm not opposed to doing. You want to mix this up until it's about the consistency of... Um, about the consistency of chocolate syrup. It might be a little thin. I don't have any hard and fast rule for how much paint to how much paste. I just mix it up till I think it's the right consistency. And it doesn't take very long to do this, so um, and I didn't do it ahead of time because I didn't know how long that first part was going to take. So, yeah. So, there you go. Chocolate syrup. You're welcome, Dawn. You're welcome. Oops, got a little paint. little paint drippage going on here. If I can get the paint off my hands that I just got all over myself. Okay. Don, how much longer before you move? The color shift paints, these are from the Folk Art Company, and these are like an interference type of paint. They look one way on light colors. They look a different way on dark colors. In fact, um, when you put them on dark colors, they look, if you, sand, if you swatch them on both light and dark, you'll be like, those cannot be the same colors. But they are. Okay, so you, th this combines really pretty quickly, uh, the paint and the paste. In the paste paper videos, I do show, as I recall, I do show using wallpaper. I either show doing it or I show the results of using wallpaper paste and liquid starch. I may just show the results. I don't remember. It's been so long since I recorded those videos. These are beautiful paints. They're a little pricey, but you know what? Yeah, I'm still hoping that that's going to work out. Miss Dawn, I'm still hoping that's going to work out. I haven't, haven't got it totally together yet. <laughs> I 
Um, like I said, these paints tend to be a little bit pricey, but here's the thing. I can save these because they're more expensive until they go bad, or I can choose to use them. I decided to use them. So, and each one of these colors is something flash. Like this one is blue, fl blue violet flash. This one is purple flash. This one is, I think, orange flash. Yes, this one is green flash. This one is aqua flash. And this one is pink flash, I believe. Yeah, I'm still hoping I can get that worked out, Dawn. I'm still hoping for that. All right, we're going to call it done. We're going to call them mixed up, okay? You need something when you do this that is going to be a texturizing tool of some kind. You can do, you can buy, you can use commercial texturing tools, which I'm going to be using, or you can use, um, here's another couple of commercial things. One is a wedge, one is a round tip, or you can do, um, you can make your own using fake credit cards or real credit cards, like ones that you're not using anymore. This is my Tim Holtz, my original Tim Holtz mat, which is a mess, and it's on a board. And I did that so that I can lift it on and off the table easily. All right, so I'm putting a foam brush in each one of my little things, so you see how it goes. All right, let's go for this one. Now, what these stickers are, let's see. Hi, Care. Care Heart is the one that's doing the auction tomorrow. So, <coughs> if you haven't subscribed to Care's channel, click her name and you could go subscribe. It's tomorrow at 2, right, Care? 2 Eastern. Uh, so you can see the stickers here. I'm just giving you a look so you can see what they are. This is a microphone, a movie, um, film projector. This is a, a slate, you know, one of those clapper slates. This looks like an Oscar. This looks like a, um, yeah, like a milkshake or something. A film reel. I think. I don't know what this is. Anyway, so you see what they are. I'm going to turn it this way. Okay. Okay, so here we go. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use, I'm just going to pick a color. I'm going to use a color. Now, the paint or the spray below here is the Dilutions um, spray. And I do that, I do that on purpose because I like it to move. And sometimes it moves this paper, you know, because I want it to move, this paper's not letting the spray move. So. You know, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So I just put on a, a coat of paint and then texture it. The paste allows the paint to hold its shape. Okay, so we've got that. And then before it dries, I'm going to use this. This is just a wedge. It's called a style stick. Now, I'm not going to pay any attention to where the stickers are. Where the stickers are is just um, where the stickers, you know, they're going to show up the way they're going to show up. I'm not going to pay any attention to where the um, designs are going to actually show on the individual stickers. Okay, and then I'm going to set this aside and let it dry. Just 
making myself some room. Do I use cardstock for this? Um, these are those the sheets of stickers. But you can use cardstock. You can use any kind of paper you like. You can use ugly scrapbook paper. That's one of my favorites. You can use um, text weight paper, like copy paper, printer paper. You can do. But these are the these are actually the stickers. Okay, see the you can see the shapes of the stickers. Um. So let's turn it and get a different. The secret to doing this is you've got to do multiple layers. The first layer or two, you go, oh, this, and I think it every single time I do this, I'm like, oh, this is going to just be horrendous. Horrendous. And it is until the second or third layer. Usually the third layer is about the time that I start liking it. And as it dries, you have to let this stuff dry. You don't let it dry. Um, the, there's something about the drying process that makes it better. I don't know what that is. Changes when it dries. Okay, so let's do this one. Hi, Tender. Yeah, so you can use cardstock. You can use to do paste paper. You can do it on newspaper. And here's another thing. Let's say I don't like that. I mean, I'm fine with that. But if you don't like it, just use your brush with your paint and just paint it out. Okay? Just paint it out. As long as it's not dry, you can, you can still paint, you know, change it. So let's say that I want to do this instead of that. Okay. So now you can't dilly dally around with this either. You gotta you gotta do it. It starts drying pretty quickly, so you gotta do it right away. You can do this on manila tags, you can do it on manila file folders. I mean you can do it on anything. And you can see how you're not seeing a lot of the patterning in here. That's because the paint had started to dry on me. But, you know, that's the way it is. It's okay. Moving on. Go to the next one. If you're going to do um, paste papers, if you're going to get, it's kind of like jelly plate printing. If you're going to get out the mess and you're going to do the paste paper techniques, then um, you need to have a a bunch of them going because if you have a bunch of sheets of paper you got a big mess you're gonna have a bunch of sheets of paper by the time you get done with all the um, the sheets you know for the first round of paint usually the very first one you did is dry enough to go over the second layer but you've got to have them dry between layers I have used stamps on these. Um, the only stamps that work at all in my uh, experience are foam stamps. And sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. You know, you kind of just play with it and see, see what you get. But anytime I do this, I um, put it down and, and keep moving. You know, you can't dilly-dally around. And that my dilutions is not moving very much on this, which is disappointing to me because I was really wanting it to move. I really like it when it moves because it changes this first layer. But it's not moving. So this paper, for whatever reason, yeah, it's not moving. Okay, so let's... Um, Let's do this and this and this and we'll do this is a round style stick. I 
All right, and then I'm going to leave that one alone. The, the challenge, if there is one for me, is not to do the same thing over and over and over again. Um, it, you really, the, be, the most beautiful part about paste papers to me is the variety. So, you really want the variety in the paper. Variety of pattern, the right, variety of color. And I'm telling you, my very, one of my very favorite things to use to do this is, um, really and truly, is ugly scrapbook paper that you're not going to use for anything else. That Some of my favorite pieces ever have come out. Because what it does is it takes that layer of pattern that you don't like or that I don't like. I mean, it's not ugly to everybody. It's just ugly to me. And Because like when I very first started doing, getting into doing stuff with paper, I went to, I think it was Joann's, and they had these giant stacks of paper for, I don't know, it was less than $20. Giant. I mean, it was like this much. I bought two of them. There was like one for holidays, and I can't remember what the other one was. All occasion, but it was, it was you know, like they'd have a whole page of shamrocks, and a whole page of hearts, and a whole page of the, which at the time made sense to me. And the more I... I believe me, I have over half of each of those stacks. I, it's how little I use those. But I can take those really, to me, ugly patterns and use the technique. And I do the same thing. I start with the stencils and the dilutions sprays. And I like the dilutions because I, I want the ink to move if possible. Um, and then I start going over layers of paste paint and you watch it. And you'll watch the design, the original design, it goes down, 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 down. Every time you put another layer of paste paint on it, the, that original design sinks down, down, down. But because you're revealing parts of the paper all the time, it still, it, it's, you still see little bits of that. And so it's like looking down, to me, it's like looking through water um, and saying, what is that? So, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> My signature squiggles, huh? Yep, that could be. That could be. All right. So let's do this. So we're just going to do some more. And you can put as many colors on a page as you want, you know. And since these shapes are small, there's nothing wrong with doing small bits of um, small sections of color. But you'll notice how precise not I'm being. Whoops, sorry. That would help if you could see what I was doing, huh? Um, so I've got different, just different messy bits of color. And then I just start, you know, playing with it and just see what I can do, you know. And it's good to have something to wipe your um, tool off with. My watch is an i uh, an Apple Watch that my son and granddaughter gave. They gave both of Claus Man and me an Apple Watch for Christmas. I could not believe my eyes. And my Apple Watch consistently scolds me for things like get up and move. Don't sit there any longer it's a good reminder actually okay but yeah it's telling me it's time for you to get up and stand time for you to move time for you to do this always tells me that something it's always trying to order me around all right i gotta make some room again
Okay. So let's put some purple on top of this. Because why not? I say, why not? But you can't dilly dally around with this. At least with the art paste, you can't. You've got to get it on there, pattern it, and move on. That's a good thing. Keeps fiddlers from fiddling too much. Now, there are people that, who are paste paper artists who probably are having a fit at what I'm doing. Bonafide paste paper is made with um, rice, like rice paste, and you cook it. And, you know, they're very precise with their with their movements and um whoops their patterning they're very precise barb is not barb just gets in and gets out and gets over you know okay so we're gonna call that one done all right i need to make myself a bit more room here Usually when I do this, I have big sheets of plastic on the floor. And so I'm just constantly up and down, up and down, moving. Moving the paper and the sheet of plastic. and Because I do this, when I do this for real, rather than just a few little sheets of paper here, I mean, I might do 30... 30 or 40 different sheets of paper in a session. It's kind of like jelly plate printing. It, they, they really are similar in the fact that it's not worth the mess to me unless I'm going to do a lot of it. All right. Let's go to this one. But you got to have enough paint on it so that you can actually texture it. So you got to have enough, but you don't want it to have too much. It's a Goldilocks thing. It is a Goldilocks thing. Thingamajig. All right. This tool that I'm using here is a Martha Stewart tool. I don't know if it's even still made. Might be. Might not. Don't know. This one is a catalyst tool. Okay, so we'll let that dry. And probably you're going to have to watch for uh, the blog post that I put up about this where you can see the final, the final results because there's no way that we're going to be able to get very many layers on here because of the drying time. Oh, this one's going to move the paint or the ink. That's good. Can you see how it's changing the color of the paint? Instead of that bright turquoise, it changed it to a duller color. A duller color. Hi, Sherry. Yep, 
Okay, so that's that. Whoops. enough. So you can see what I'm doing is I'm just getting texture into the paint. It's just texture, design, texture. And one more sheet that I have here. All right, one more. So let's do And we'll use this one. Okay, call it good. And so this one can sit and dry. And we'll go back and look at the first one here in a minute. And see if it's dry enough to put another layer. Otherwise, you might have to heat gun it a little bit. And actually, I need to take a quick break here. So I'm going to... I'm going to do this and I'll be right back. So everybody hang on. I'll be back. Okay, and I'm back. All 
All right, these um, are not dry yet. So I'm going to give them a quick dry with the heat gun. If everybody can hang on a minute, and we'll do another. Um, we'll do another layer on this one. I normally let them completely dry on their own uh, without dabbing up any of the excess paint. However, in the interest of time here, I'm going to dab it and pick up some of the extra. Okay, that's pretty dry. All right, let's do the same thing to this one. Now, I don't know whether you're gonna be able to see this or not. I'm gonna tip these in the light they are highly reflective. That is the color shift paint, and you can see how it shifts from this yellow green into this kind of grass green. Um, and on this one, most of the Dilutions ink has dissipated up into the paste paint. That's funny. Interesting, because it didn't move when I put the paint down. It moved after, as the paint was drying. That's when the ink moved. That's funny. All right, let's do the other ones while I'm here. We'll do. We'll just do these four. But you can see a lot of the design from the stencil and the the dilution sprays has gone away. Color is still there, but. The um, the stencil the 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 stencil designs you know where you can make out the exact design that's all kind of gone away. So this paper has its own. Every paper has its own unique property. When it comes to how the inks and the paint paste paint reacts okay. and one more I really prefer to let them air dry, um, but that's just my preference. I like it when it main when the paint maintains some of the edges from you know some of the dimension from the edges and stuff. Okay, these are fairly dry, dry enough that we can move on. Okay, so this is the first one. And so I'm going to put another um, coat of paint on it. So I'm going to choose something different than I chose the first time. You don't have to, but... Um, now at this point, the ink is completely covered by a layer of paint. And so the ink is no longer going to move on you. It only has a chance to move in that first application of paint. All right, so here we go. We got that layer.
and then this is going to sit and dry and what you're going to start to see as it dries is you're going to start to see that first layer that had the strong swiggles and those stronger lines you'll start to see that you'll start to see things kind of move and change as you build up the layers of the paint Okay, let's go with um, this one. And you don't have to use two colors. You know, you can put one color over the whole thing. I just generally go with two or three colors just because I find it, um, I find it interesting. To me, it has more, um, it's just, to me, it just has more interest if it's, multiple colors And then usually that's like that's enough and I'll let that dry but you can see now that it's got a couple of layers you can still see a little bit of the ink underneath it like there's something interesting back there but you don't really know what the color shift paints are looking quite nice however I have to say I do like the color shift paints on these I think that was the same color I used the first time. <laughs> oh well. Oh well. So it's got the same color, two layers in a row. The less you think about this, the better off you are. Don't think, just do it. Okay? Done with that one. And one more. Okay, let's do this purple. do this other purple. This is blue violet flash, I believe. And then let it sit and dry again and then you can come over it with a third layer if you want if you so choose we're only going to do two layers on this okay so let me move some stuff out of the way I didn't do too badly coming out with the amount of paint that I intended to use so not bad, not bad. I'm going to stick this here for a second so the camera has something to look at. We're going to um, dry this one and then we'll peel off some of the stickers and stick them on something so we can see what they look like. How's that? 
The color shifts are really neat. Yeah, they really are. But, I mean, the camera and looking at them in this way does them no, um, does them no justice. You really need to see them in person to really get the effect of the color shift and the metallic, the reflective quality. Yeah, isn't that butterfly meat here? That's a canvas. This was a canvas. And I um, cut it off the stretcher bar and repurposed it into a bunch of different projects. Okay, this seems pretty dry. Pretty dry. Okay. Um, let's get a journal. <coughs> Just hunting for a journal here. Okay. Yeah, the leftovers are usable for other stuff as well. Absolutely. Okay, let's, um, here's a, here's a page that has got a bunch of busyness on it. So let's put some stickers on it. And then you can take the stickers and you can add to them, you know, with ink or whatever you want to do. Okay, so we're going to pull this off. This is probably not going to show up on this very well. That's all right. We're going to stick them all on this page. So let's just pull them all off this page and just so you can get the idea of what's what. Trying to figure out what I don't even I don't even know what this is. Oh, must be a rocket. Rocket ship, right? Is it a rocket? I think it might be a rocket. We'll put it down here. I don't know what it is. What do you guys think that is? Whoops. I bent the I bent the nose. I think it's a rocket. Yeah, I kind of think it is too. Okay, what else we got here? There's something here. This is like a treasure hunt, people. This is like a treasure hunt. Let's see, what is it? What in the world is that? I don't know. We're just going to stick it there. I have no idea what that is. But you could add much more detail to these if you... Oh, this looks like a um, telescope, huh? I'm just going to stick these on here just randomly just so we can see what they are. Just so we have them off the page and you can see the concept behind this. This, I think, is a flying saucer or could be made into Saturn, I suppose. There's another, maybe a moon or a planet. Oh, this might be a... Maybe Spaceman, 
It's a man, anyway. He has a little place that needs to be trimmed off, so I'm going to trim it off here where I can see it up next to my nose. We'll, we'll put him down here. He's standing down here watching the rocket take off. Got a meteor happening there. Could be. Could be. Definitely. All right. What do we got here? This is a real treasure hunt. Might be a good idea to um, take a picture of these before you start painting them. All right, this might be a falling star or a something like that. We'll put it up here. Now, under normal circumstances, I would not be pulling all of these off of one sheet and putting them on one thing. We're just doing this just so we've... We're doing it because we can. Okay. I don't know what this is supposed to be. It just looks like a big S to me. You guys can figure out what that is. <laughs> Some of you that know space things will know. Where's Dee Dee? Dee Dee is interested in astronomy and space. She could tell us what this is. Okay, and this is... One giant leap for whatever. What do you say when you stepped on the moon? I was planting the flag on the moon. Uh oh. We have another we have another rocket. The stages of the rocket. Here it started and here it's lifting off, huh? I have no idea what this is. It has two little triangle things, so we'll just stick those on here. It has two little poke out triangles. Let's see if I can get the other one. What do you think that is? Anybody know what that is? I have no idea. So we're just going to stick it on here. No clue. All right. Seems like there might be one more. Oh, it's a star. We'll put the star up here in the heavens. I think that might be all there is. Oh, nope. There's another one. Another star. We'll put it up here. I think that might be all of them now. And then from there, you can see that you can you could take punches and you could punch or cut shapes out of. There's a lot of extra room on here, or you could cut this into a strip and use that as a, um, you know, washi tape sort of thing. Let's see if we can even this up a little bit with scissors. Ha! <laughs> She says, yeah, I'll even this up with my scissors. Mm -hmm. So let's see what we can get. Might be a good idea to draw a line. Okay, so let's find another spot where we can stick this, just where, where it'll show up. See? And then you've got a piece of um, you got a, a piece of tape that you can use and there's a lot of stuff left on just this one piece to get other shapes and, and um, 
designs and things out of it. So anyway, that is that. So here's all, this is everything we got out of that one, just out of that one, the one sheet of stickers. And we made them our own. But even another layer would make them even better. Yeah, one more layer would make them even better. So there we go, there is that. All right, so I think my voice has held out pretty well today. So I think I'm going to not push my luck any further and I'm going to call it quits for today because I really didn't know if I'd get to do this this long. Um, I do want to give you some other ideas if I can find my note. I have a note someplace for other ideas for this. What in the world did I do with that? Here we go. For the stickers, um, some other things you could do would be to practice, it, what, regardless of what the shape is, you could put fill words in the shape. If you look at some magazine ads, you'll see that they haven't drawn a shape. They've just written and the writing creates the shape. So you could do the same thing with these stickers because they have no edges on them. Uh, they have the cutout shape, the die cut shape, but they have no drawing on them. So you could just take words like a quote um, and, and write it all across the shape. So that would be fun to do. You could take the shape like this um, satellite type thing or this, you know, what kind of to me, yeah, it looks like a spaceship sort of thing. And you could just make one word that fills the whole shape. So you could do that. Um, you could, the whole concept behind this from the book was that you sketch inside those sticker shapes. So you draw inside the shapes or draw and color them. So you could do that. You practice your imagination and your drawing skills. Um, what else? You could zentangle or doodle within the shapes with various pins, whether they were micron pins or other kinds of pins or jelly roll pins that kind of stuff just doodle I think that I think some of these shapes and you could even do that on these like for example um, take this one this kind of strangely shaped thing and you could go right over the top of that with a zen, zen tangle design or this or this so just because it's shaped in a certain way doesn't mean that you have to leave that, you know, pretend that that shape is written in stone. You could just, you know, do a zentangle or a doodle design within that shape. You could uh, take this, the sheets of stickers and you could print them on the jelly plate. Um, you could stencil them, um, you know, so those are just a few things that you might do to change the, the idea up, you know, and play with the play with the concept. I think they're very creative actually. I think it was well worth 10 less than $10. I will get many many more hours than uh, $10 worth of fun out of that. Another thing you could do while I was thinking about it, I got out these uh, security envelopes and so this is one last idea and then we'll then we're going to be done take security envelopes because they have some really beautiful patterns on many of the envelopes and you could just take the design ideas from the security envelope patterns and use those see how pretty this is how interesting is that design so you could use this as inspiration for your pattern work, your doodles, designs, whatever, inside the sticker shapes. So those are just some ideas. Straight lines going one direction or change them on a diagonal. There's another design. This is just using a letter. Makes an interesting pattern. These are just squiggly lines. Think of like cheesecloth. So, not straight lines, squiggly lines in circles with a, a letter inside. And in between the, let's see, there's another one here. This one. 
So you're just, you know, those are like little tiny zigzag. That's another one to make, not to make your eyes kind of go across. But just some really good doodling ideas. And in between here where the circles um, looks like a flower, four petal flower inside a circle. That's a really good design too. So those are all good doodle pattern ideas. Okay, that really is the end of that. Um, okay. Oh, is that right, Susie? Oh, that's great. Okay, I'm going to stop. Uh, the cats are being good, so I'm not going to get them out today. The sponsors, we're going to just leave them right back there where they are. So I will see you um, hopefully the first Saturday of April. If everything goes as planned, I will be back then, if not before. So I will see you then. So remember to get creative today because you know it's easy. And I will see you again really soon. Come over and visit us at howtogetcreative.com. See you there. Bye, everybody.